Hey, um, I just wanted to be able to go over this um, practice test with you before you um, take the real test, because if you didn't do well on this, then you're not going to do well on the real test, okay? So, um, we will go over this here and message me back if you still have some questions about specific ones. Um, so, this one says select uh, which of the following represents surface area? Okay, this person did great on this response, but I just want to say that anything that talks about filling something up, that's talking about volume. Okay, anything that would be flat, like wrapping the sides of a birthday present. Okay, we don't put all the wrapping paper inside the box. Okay, so this is talking about the flat edges, the flat sides. So this is surface area. So that's why they checked this box. Okay, area, we use base times height, and so that's two dimensions, which is why we have inches squared or uh, feet squared or really just square units in general. Okay, so this is also surface area, which is why they checked it. Cubic units are for volume because that's length times width times height. Okay, that's three dimensions. So that's why we use inches cubed or feet cubed or cubic units. Okay, now painting your bathroom walls, again, that's talking about the flat surface of your wall. So that's surface area. Okay, let's move on to the next question. If I wanted to wrap this box in wrapping paper, how many square inches of wrapping paper would I need? Now, most people chose this answer right here that's selected, 252. What they didn't pay attention to was this hint, draw a net. Guys, this goes back to when we were in school still, where we were drawing out the net of the figure. Okay, so that is talking and it's asking us to find surface area. If you selected this first response, what you found was volume, okay? You did nine times seven times four is 252, but we need to find the surface area. So you need to make sure that you draw your net one face at a time. I'm, for time's sake, I'm going quickly, but you need to make sure you label the front, the back, the top, the bottom, and the sides. Okay, and then label the dimensions as well. For time's sake, I'm going to go through this quickly. Hopefully you have done that and you can pull out your sheet to check your answers. So for the front, okay, we're going to do area equals base times height. I'm going fast, but if you need to pause it, pause it and catch up. So base, the base is 9, the height is 4, so that's area is equal to 36. Okay, the front is the same as the back. The back is also then going to be 36. Now let's look at the top. Okay, area equals base times height. It's a rectangle. So the base is 9. The height is 7. So that's going to be 63. Okay, now the top is going to be the same as the bottom. Okay, so the bottom is going to also be 63. Now let's look at the sides. Okay, side number 1 Area equals base times height, okay, 7 times 4. Area equals 28, okay, so then side 2 will also be 28. Now that we have the area for each face, we need to add up 36 plus 36 plus 63 plus 63 plus 28 plus 28. When we add it all up, you should get 254 square inches, okay? All right, next one. If I wanted to fill this plastic tub with water, how much water would it hold? Okay, it's asking how much it would hold. That's going to be volume, okay? So for volume, we know that that's length times width times height, okay? The length is six and a half. The width is seven and a fourth, and the height is three. Before we can multiply mixed numbers together, we have to change them to improper fractions. To do this, I use the around the world trick. So I start with the denominator and multiply the whole number. Two times six is 12. Then we need to add the numerator. So that's 13 halves. We keep the same denominator, okay? Do the same thing here. Four times seven is 28 plus one is 29 over four. 
Then I need to multiply by 3 to make that look like a fraction. I put it over 1. Now, this is going to give me a really big number when I multiply these across. Okay, so volume is equal to 13 times 29 times 3. That's going to give us a big number, 1,131. Okay, then across the bottom, 2 times 4 times 1 is 8. Now, all of our answers are in decimals. They're not in mixed numbers. They're not in fractions. So in order to change this to a decimal, all I need to do is remember one thing. That fraction bar means to divide. So I'm going to type into my calculator 1,131 divided by 8. Go ahead and do that now. Once you do that, you should get 141.375. Okay, and because we're talking about volume, we're going to choose the one for cubic inches because we multiplied three dimensions together. Okay, let's look at the next one. All right, so find the volume if a cube, on a cube, if one edge is 6.3 centimeters. Okay, this person got this right, but what a lot of people have been doing for this problem is that they have forgotten that a cube would have all the same edges. So we could really say, well, volume is going to equal length times width times height. Well, it's going to be 6.3 for each of those. So it's going to be 6.3 times 6.3 times 6.3. A lot of people have been doing 6.3 times 3. Well, you can't do that. You've got to take it one step at a time. Do 6.3 times 6.3 first and then multiply it again. Okay, so you should get 250.047 cubic centimeters. Again, I know I'm going through this fast. Pause it if you need to. Okay. All right, this one says check everything that is true for the figure below. Select all that apply. Okay. Most people have been getting the faces right. The faces are the flat edges. Now, vertices are the corners. Okay, so for this shape, there's one up here and then four on the bottom in each of the corners. So that's five vertices. So this person was correct to not check this one. We don't need to include that. Now, edges are the straight lines. So this one has one, two, three, four. And then on the bottom, there's five, six, seven, eight. So there are eight edges. So we should have checked this box. Now, prisms, let's talk really quickly about the difference between prisms and pyramids. Remember that prisms have two bases, okay? So for a triangular prism, the bases would both be triangles. So here's a triangle and here's a triangle, okay? Then they would be attached, they're parallel with each other, they would be attached by these straight lines. This is what a prism looks like and the bases are those parallel sides. So one's back there and one is up here. Now pyramids, they have one base, okay? So this base down here, this is the one base on this pyramid, and what shape is it? It's a rectangle, so that's why it's a rectangular pyramid. So we shouldn't have checked this one, but we do need to check the rectangular pyramid. All right, on this one, I'm gonna just go ahead and tell you, if you selected 828, what you probably forgot to do was to divide by two for the triangles. Remember that the triangle formula is area equals base times height divided by two, or sometimes we use the one half times base times height. So up here, you should have gotten 234 for this face, 234 for the front, and then 180 in the middle, okay? But for the triangles, we do the base, times the height, so 12 times 10, which is 120. A lot of people left it there and forgot to divide by two. So make sure you do that and get 60 for both of the triangles, okay? Then once you add up all of these faces, okay, you should get 768. The other mistake students are making is they're choosing the wrong units. Because this is area, and we're only multiplying two dimensions together, base and height, we're going to select the square inches. All right. 
This one, most people have gotten it after we talked about what vertices were. There's, remember the vertices are the corners, so there's six, okay? Now, this one says, find the volume if each cube has an edge length of one-fourth of a yard, okay? So this is one-fourth, two-fourths. We have to count by fourths. This is one-fourth, two-fourths. And then how far does it go back? One-fourth, two-fourths. So our length, width, and height is all two-fourths. Now, can two-fourths be simplified? Yeah, we can divide both the bottom and the top by two. And so when we do that, we get one-half. So volume is equal to one-half times one-half times one-half. Oops, I forgot to do length times width times height first. Okay. So the other problem students have been doing is instead of multiplying, they've been adding so be careful, let's multiply across the top. One times one times one is one. Then two times two is four. Four times two is eight. Some people accidentally chose one sixth, okay? But it's one eighth. All right, I'm cutting it close on time. Let's see about the next one. Okay, this one a lot of people just didn't read carefully. Um, they kind of were like, okay, let's count and go. But each one is one half of a meter. So this is one half, two halves, three halves. Okay, this is one half, two halves, three halves, four halves, which is the same as two wholes. And then back here we have five halves. So when we multiply that together, length times width times height, okay, is five halves times three halves times two, which we can put it over one to make it look like a fraction. Okay, then we have five times three times two is 30. Two times two times one is four. So now we have 30 divided by four. Four goes into 37 times. Seven times four is 28. And I have two pieces left over out of four. Okay, now we can simplify that fraction to seven and one half. And you can't see it down here, but this option was our correct answer, seven and a half meters cubed because we're talking about volume. Okay. Now our last one, now a lot of people have been selecting this one, which this answer choice does not make sense. Our question is saying how many dice can fit in the box? And you said 15 eighths dice. That answer choice doesn't make sense, so make sure you slash the trash. These fractions don't make sense to this uh, question. So let's talk about what it's actually asking. A box with the same dimensions as the prism below is used to ship miniature dice whose side lengths are one half an inch. So here's my dice. Okay, it's one half by one half by one half. So what we're asking is how many of these dice Okay, can fit into that box. So let's look at this front measurement. How many of these dice, if they're one half in length, would fit along this five halves measurement? Well, we would have one half, two halves, three halves, four halves, and five halves, so five of them would fit. How many would fit right here? One. And how many would fit tall? We have one half, two halves, three halves. Three of them would fit. Once we figure out that, then we just have to plug in those whole numbers to our formula, length times width times height, okay? So that's gonna be five times one times three, which is 15 dice, okay? I know I went through this really fast, but I did want you to be able to get some feedback before you take your test. So message me now that you've watched the video and we can move forward from here.